Good afternoon. I'm very excited to be here today. It is Friday and it's noon and we're going to be talking about 15 different ways you can help keep your workout consistent. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about a few housekeeping items. Hello, person number one, number two. I don't know if you know, but in Facebook Live, which is what we're doing right now, it's a Facebook Live broadcast, you can hit hearts and happy faces, sad faces, whatever, throughout the broadcast, and they float across the screen. And why that's useful is because then I know what parts of the talk you are enjoying, and then it might even trigger me to do another talk on that particular part of the talk. So as we're going through today, make sure that if you're enjoying something, or if you don't like something, or if you want to just do a shout out, click those hearts and happy faces at the bottom. Okay, so that's with Facebook Live. Also, if you are participating in these classes that we're doing on Fridays or you're just enjoying them, please share them with your network of people. I would love to be able to help more people. So if you want to share this on your page, that would be also really great. So we are going to get started. A couple other things first as well. I am Dr. Heather Denniston. I have a blog called Well Fit and Fed where I share nutrition, fitness, and wellness information. And I really encourage you to go to the homepage and sign up in the sign up box on the homepage because then you get all the secret information. I send out recipes and articles and tips on exercise and all just very specific information. I do not send out fluff. I do not. Um, send out your email address to anybody else that stays very private but if you want to participate in our community a little bit more you can certainly do that by signing up in the sign up box on the home page so that sign up on well fit and fed we talked about facebook live make sure you're pressing those hearts and happy faces as we go through the broadcast today and then also i wanted to talk about you know i always mention the three-day reset when we're talking and that is the book that i published last july last july like two months ago. And um, some exciting news is I'm developing a course for it. And what that's going to look like is in January, we are going to do a four week, three day reset um, intensive that's going to do the three day reset. But then we're also going to be talking about other aspects of nutrition, some fitness, some wellness, all sorts of different things. So soon there will be coming an opportunity to do an early bird sign up for that. So keep a look out for that. It's going to be lots of fun. And we're going to be doing webinars and private Facebook group and online coaching and going through the book and lots of different things. So I think it'll be a lot of fun and it's perfect timing for the new year when we all decide to get healthy. So, okay, speaking of which, we are going to get started. We are talking about 15 ways to keep your workouts and fitness consistent. Now, I know lots of us have problems with that. Uh, we get started, I know in college, when I first started working out more seriously, I'd do two great weeks and then I'd fall off the wagon and then it was climbing back on and it was, you know, two weeks on, two months off. So it was really hard to get consistent, but over the years I've developed some techniques to help everybody when they're feeling like they can't stay consistent or they just aren't getting the results they want, um, then these methods can be really helpful. So, hi Mercedes! Good to see you, honey. We'll see you in March, my dear, and January. Um, okay, so number one is obviously, well I say obviously, although a lot of patients I have are like, oh, that's such a good idea. We wanna schedule our workouts first in our calendars. We all wear many, many hats. Whether you have kids or don't have kids, whether you have a job or don't have a job, there are lots of things pulling on your time. But really there is very little that is of greater importance than your own personal health because if you are not healthy, nobody else around you can be healthy. And so scheduling your workouts in your calendar, whether you use a hard calendar or a Google calendar, scheduling that in there first. Because otherwise you are trying to shove in a priority when everything else has already taken up your space and it becomes very different, difficult to stay consistent. So number one is schedule that workout first. And I'm talking one or two weeks in advance. So you flip forward, put it in, and it is a non-negotiable 
appointment with yourself. Now, those of you in sales or those of you in a job who have to meet with clients, if you had a client that was you would consider your most important client, you would never cancel on them a few minutes before your appointment. You would never just not show up. Well, I suggest that you are your most important client and that you are the most important appointment in the week. So my encouragement to you is make those appointments with yourself for exercise and fitness, non-negotiable, um, immovable, and permanent. Okay, so that's number one. Number two is it kind of dovetails off number one is, is that is set recurring appointments in your day timer. Now, here's what I mean by that. If you set your fitness time for Tuesday mornings at nine o'clock and you execute that a few weeks in a row, what is going to happen is your boss, your coworkers, and your family are going to realize you are unavailable Tuesdays at nine o'clock for whatever reason. They're gonna stop pulling on you for that time. So if your workouts are the same time, you know, throughout the week, every week, then your inner circle is going to help support you in that by realizing, oh, that's a permanent appointment on Heather's calendar. I know she does yoga Tuesdays at seven, so I'm not gonna ask her out for wine. I'm not gonna ask her to go for um, coffee or whatever at that time because I know she's already busy. So help them help you by keeping it consistent in your calendar. Number three, we wanna ask a friend to hold you accountable. Now, I'm gonna show you a picture. I have a client and he has a little bit of a hard time staying consistent with his workouts. So we established a rule and that is he works out three times a week and I get a photo of a bike three times a week. That's his way of holding himself accountable is he's asked me to receive those photos so he knows that if he doesn't go there, he's got no photo to send. And it has worked really well. You could text a friend when you get to the gym. You could have them text you. Can you please text me Tuesdays at seven and ask me if I'm on my way to yoga? So have a close friend hold you accountable and maybe you do it for each other. Okay, so that's number three. Number four is finding a workout buddy. Now that's not the same as the one before. The one before, your person doesn't have to be there with you. They don't have to do the same kinds of workouts or even be a participant in your workout schedule. But this one is find somebody who has consistent likes in regard to their fitness choices and make a plan. Now, some people go, oh, I don't like to work out with anyone. That's okay. It could be as easy as a high five in the lobby of the gym just to prove you're both there and then you go your separate ways and do your workout and then maybe you reconvene back after for a swig of water and another high five and way to go. That's all it has to be. But maybe you do do better with working out with somebody and so you get a buddy, maybe you even hire a trainer for the two of you and you hold each other accountable because it's easier to tell yourself you're just not gonna show up, it's a little harder to make that phone call and say, oh, Judy, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna make it today because you're letting them down. You're part of their accountability, so it's a mutual win. So finding a buddy to work out with. Okay, number five, following Oprah's 10 minute rule. Yay, I got a thumbs up, that's good. Thank you so much. Make sure you're hitting those hearts and thumbs up as we go through today. Oprah's 10 minute rule. For some reason, this stuck with me and it works. So what the deal is, is if you are on your schedule, you're on your way to your workout or your workout is coming up and you absolutely do not feel like going, okay? You're busy or you're tired or whatever. Oprah's 10 minute rule is you have to do 10 minutes. So go get on your bike and just do 10 minutes and if after 10 minutes you're like, I gotta go, I gotta go finish my whatever, or I've got something better I have to do, then go, just do your 10 minutes. But here's what happens. As those first few minutes are going, your stress starts to release, you start to get energized, you start to actually get excited about the rest of the workout, and very rarely will you bail after that 10 minutes. So you can tell yourself you're gonna leave in 10 minutes, and you might, but the likelihood is you're gonna probably finish the workout. So that's Oprah's 10 minutes rule, giving her credit. Okay. 
making it a challenge. Sometimes workouts get boring, they get stale, they get old. And so there is a little bit of a competitor in all of us. And the example I'm gonna to use today is one family who were patients of mine, they wanted to incorporate more fitness and exercise in their life as a family. And so the mom of the family set up a big, long piece of paper in their kitchen, and it had each of their names on it, and it had 100 miles for the summer. And tennis counted as a certain amount of miles, a walk, you could count actual, actual mileage. Um, if you did something that didn't take up mileage, like jumping on the trampoline or a weights workout, those all had designated certain amount of mileage. And so the little avatars of each of their family crept along this 100 mile chart and it was a competition to see who could finish their 100 miles first. And so we can even do that just with ourselves. It's silly, but it works. So set up a chart, set up a checklist of, of something that you wanna execute. Or maybe you wanna do 30 workouts in one month or 30 workouts in two months or whatever that is. And you set up a checklist that you have to respond to. There is something in that that helps us execute more consistently. So setting up a little competition with yourself or with, again, with a friend, maybe there's a, um, something, some sort of um, pot of gold at the end, if you will. Uh, maybe you set a financial reward for whoever wins first, whatever the number of hours to work out or the number of mileage or whatever it is you set, you know, you can think about it yourself. But creating just a little inherent internal competition can be really helpful. Okay, the perfect outfit. We are on number seven for those of you just joining in. Hi, Court. So good to see you. You're right the perfect time. The perfect outfit. You know, and some of the other listeners or, or watchers also know, that for some reason we are a shiny, sparkly, appreciative species and somehow a new outfit can help. So I'm going to show you. These are my sparkly pants and when I don't feel like working out, I put on my sparkly pants. Do you see? That's gold and it's glittery. I put those on and suddenly I feel like, okay, I can go to the gym. And I peacock around the gym, hey, hey, hey. And you know, you might even lift a few weights or two while you're there. So getting the new outfit, putting something on that you feel good in can make a very big difference in your workout. So the perfect outfit. Now we're on number eight. Sign up for something one to three months out. That goes back to our inner competitor. Now what I mean by that is maybe there's a 5K, maybe there's a Tough Mudder. Something that I started doing was I love to inline skate, but I found that I just was getting lazy about it. So I found an inline skating marathon and I started doing those. And so I would set those up a few months out and when I didn't feel like going out and skating, I'd be like, I gotta go skate 26 miles in about two months, so I better get my butt out there. And so that was really helpful. So my encouragement to you, and I've done this with patients before and it's been very successful, is find something that you could get your head wrapped around and make it a challenge, make it something that kind of scares you a little bit. Sign up for it, pay your money. And then as it's getting closer, you're gonna feel more motivated to make sure you're in shape for whatever that event is. So things like Tough Mudder 5K, um, the Big Climb is a great one. If you're not familiar with that, most cities have it. It is an annual climb up 70 flights of stairs for leukemia. You know, find something that's worthwhile that you have a passion about. So that's another option for you to try to keep your workout consistent. Okay, pay or get paid. Now, we talked a little bit about this with um, the competition, but let's talk more about it. So pay or get paid. Some of us are motivated financially. And so there are a couple opportunities out there where you can pay in and then depending on who actually meets their own set goals, they get paid. So there's a pool of money and then you get paid based on whether you make your goals. That one I think is called PACT, P-A-C-T, and it's an app and you can check that out, but there's lots of those out there actually, and there are even corporations who will pay you to work out. I had one patient, I loved this, 
he, um, his company had this number randomizer at the top of several of the main hikes in the neighborhood. And what you would do to prove you hiked is you would hike to the top, you'd write down whatever that random number was at that time and you write down the time that you were there. And if it matched, then you got points for that. And those points could turn into massages or money off your health care. So if you work in any kind of corporate environment, look into that. Look in and see if they have any kind of internal um, competitions for creating health, for promoting wellness. So that's one too. And then, like I said, there are some apps out there that are so great. Corporations who want to promote healthy um, and wellness and fitness and then also smaller groups of people like Impact, uh, which is an, again an app, that people pool their money and then it's kind of an internal competition with these people and whoever does the best gets the money. So it's kind of fun. So pay or be paid, put your money where your mouth is, okay? And that will help keep you motivated for exercise. Morning workouts, not my favorite, but the statistics do tell us that people who work out in the morning are way more successful and consistent with their fitness. Why? Well, your day can't have derailed too far by the time you get to the gym. Whereas at three o'clock in the afternoon, you could be in the middle of a shit storm and not be able to get to the gym. And so if you execute in the morning, you are far more likely to keep that consistent and be successful at that than if you work out in the afternoon. There are also physiologic benefits to working out in the morning. Uh, there's a whole hormonal cascade that happens, a cognitive cascade that happens. And so morning workouts are just awesome. And for those of us that aren't morning people, we dry, I literally have slept in my workout clothes before so I can just roll out of bed and get to where I'm going. And I know somebody who's listening, Courtney, uh, used to be competitive in rowing and she would do the same thing getting out of bed at five in the morning in her rowing clothes. So. We can do it, there are ways to get around it. Okay, morning workouts. Number 11, find something you love. Another friend of mine has struggled with what her fitness thing is, what's her mojo, what's her fitness mojo? And she kept trying things and not successful and trying things and wouldn't stick and she just wasn't getting the results. And then she found something she really loved. She found Hula and Bali X which is a new kind of exercise class. And she found she couldn't wait to get to these classes. She couldn't, she loved it. She was doing five classes a week. I have another client who discovered bar and she was not exercising at all. And now she's going four days a week because she loves it so much. So sometimes it's just a matter of, you're not doing what your body and mind are gonna resonate with the most. And so you may need to research that a little bit more so that it's easier to stay consistent. It's not such a chore, okay? <clears throat> Find something that you love. That's what we just talked about. Number 12, using a data tracker. This again, kind of goes back to competition. Um, and it's a real easy way. And I either use my fitness pal or I love Strava because Strava is really fun because you can, for example, I take it with me when I hike or I take it with me when I go rollerblading and I set segments. And what that means is I compete against myself and others at, on certain segments of a popular trail. I'll give you an example. I went and hiked a local hike here called Poo Poo Point. And it was the first time I used my Strava. So I was like, this thing's cool. So I set it to go and I go up the hike and I come all the way back down and I'm driving home and I hear ding, ding. And I look at it and there's this crown, just like a crown. And I'm like, what, the, what is this? And it was queen of the mountain. And there was one particular segment that I did faster than anybody else that had done it. And so I got queen for the day and I was excited and I wanted to go back and do poo poo point again. And so you can see how some of these apps can be sort of self-motivating and you can track your progress and, and collecting data is, is results in itself and it is motivating. So Strava is the one that I mentioned that's really great. And also MyFitnessPal, you can put your exercise in there and kind of see how many calories you burned and see how much um, you did in comparison to last week. So I really like the fitness apps to help keep you motivated as well. Number 13, remember five minutes is better than no minutes. 
And so it's typically, oh, I didn't have time to work out. No, you didn't have time to do the length of workout that you typically do, so you just didn't work out. So how many times have we found ourselves going, oh my gosh, I still don't have time to work out. And really, what you probably have five minutes or 10 minutes. And so my encouragement to you is do the five minutes. I know it doesn't seem like much, but your body actually really loves it. And so what I'll do if I am just running out of time is I will do 10 push-ups, 10 squat jumps, 10 tricep dips, and a one minute plank. And I'll just repeat that as many times as I have time for. And if it's just two times and that's about four minutes, then fine, that's fine. It's something and your body kind of fuels on that for minutes after, so just do something. Another example is, oh, I was late for my class so I couldn't work out. Well, if you're doing a class in a gym and you're late, get on a bike for 20 minutes or go do something else for 20 minutes. Or if you get home and you're just too late to go to the gym, go for a walk, go do something. It doesn't have to be long, but just something. Okay, 14. Some of you have maybe fallen off the wagon a little bit, which is part of why I did this talk. And the getting restarted is really tough. So one of the things that I think is really important is to right now open up your day timer and find somewhere in the next 24 hours that you can do just 10 minutes, just 10 minutes of something. That starting point and just doing that little bit will allow you to get the next workout and the next workout and the next workout in. And then we go back to the beginning of what we talked about it, and that is once you've done that 10 minutes, then spend some time with your schedule marking it in as a non-negotiable appointment, first on the docket, in front of everything else so that it is immovable and permanent. You write it in Sharpie and start scheduling that. And again, you don't break appointment with yourself. You are your own most important client. You would never break an appointment with a client. So make sure you don't break that appointment with yourself. Finally, make your workout scandalous. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, this is probably my greatest trick for you. And that is pick a show, pick an audible book or something and only allow yourself to watch or listen to it while you're working out. You keep it very specific to that. Once I started doing that, I found myself driving to the gym just so I could watch the next episode. And if you stay consistent with that, then you find that you'll work out a few minutes longer. Maybe you'll stick another workout in uh, the week and it's very motivating. My husband is the perfect example of that. He has never been consistent with working out. He has gone through periods of time where he has and he has been working out super consistently for the last three months. The trick was that I shared with him, I take my iPad and I work sometimes while I'm on the bike, or I read, or I watch my show. And he was like, you can read while you're on the bike? I said, absolutely you can. And so he gets on the bike and he sets it to 20, and he works really hard and he's sweating buckets and he's just flipping through his book there. And it's awesome because he's now consistent with his workouts and he's getting some fiction, non-work related reading in, which I love as well. And so it's completely doable. So just as a quick recap, we're gonna run through the 15 super, super fast. So schedule the time before anything else. Make it a recurring appointment in your planner. Ask a friend to hold you hostage. Send them text messages or anything that will let them know you are at the gym. Find a buddy who actually wants to go to the gym with you. You don't have to work out together. Just meet in the lobby and go your separate ways and meet back at the end of your workout. Follow, follow Oprah's 10 minute rule, which is just go for 10 minutes. If you think you don't have time or you don't want to or whatever, just do the 10 minutes and you can leave after that. You probably won't, but you can and it gives you permission, and it makes it way easier. The perfect outfit, we like to be sparkly and cute, and so get a great outfit. I know it sounds so shallow and lame, but it does work. Uh, make it a challenge. So maybe you set up a 5K or a Tough Mudder a couple months out to help motivate you on those days you don't feel like working out. You know that is an eminent date that you're gonna have to be in good shape for, so it'll force you out of the house. Sign up for one to three months out. Um, 
that's the one I just mentioned, sorry, make it a challenge. So maybe you do some kind of internal challenge, like a checklist, or you do some kind of spreadsheet. I have a client right now who has the best spreadsheet for fitness that he designed himself, and it has helped keep him consistent. He's just doing 10 minutes elliptical every day, but he's doing it because he has to go and do the check mark on the, on the list, and it keeps him motivated. Pay or get paid. Find an app um, or join up with a, a group of friends and pool your money and whoever does the best. You know these, um, oh, what's that show called? That reality show that everybody, the big lose, biggest loser. You know, there's all sorts of competitions like that. So that's a good one. Morning workouts, way more effective. Find something that you love. If you are having trouble staying consistent, it might be that it's not the right form of exercise for you. Do not force it. Find something you enjoy. Use a data tracker like Strava or MyFitnessPal, and that will really help you track what you're doing. Hold on to the data so you can see how you do next time. And with Strava, you can even compete with other people doing the same hike or run or bike ride that you're doing, kind of fun. And then remember, five minutes is better than no minutes, so do the five minutes. Again, that little workout that I just mentioned is just 10 push-ups, 10 squat jumps, 10 tricep dips, and a one-minute plank and just go through it quickly and just do as many cycles as you can. And um, start now. So if you've gotten off track, open up your day timer right now and find some time in the next 24 hours that you can do just 10 minutes of some kind of movement. And then after that, spend some time looking at your schedule to map out what your next couple of weeks is gonna, are gonna look like for fitness and exercise. And then make your workout scandalous. And that means Pick a show or an audible book or a regular book that you only get to do when you're at the gym doing some kind of cardio. Now, if you do workouts that um, you can't read or listen, I mean, typically you can listen to a book doing just about anything. So that might be your solution if you're more of a CrossFitter or you're doing more weights than you are cardio, but there's always an option. Keep something sacred just for that time, okay, that you really enjoy that would motivate you. Okay, I would love to take any questions and, okay, Court, Mercedes, good. Okay, I think that's all we have for today. So thank you so much for joining in. Any of you who watched the broadcast after, um, please make sure to comment below. I'd love to know any questions you have or any other ideas you have for broadcasts. I would love it, love it, love it. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate you coming out. And again, sign up for Well, Fit and Fed so you can get all sorts of great information from the site, um, articles, fitness tips, recipes, and some of that stuff uh, non-members don't see. And so if you want to be a part of our community, make sure you sign up on the website homepage in the sign up box. And I'll look forward to spending more time with you. Okay, thank you. You guys all have a great weekend. Bye-bye.